Welcome, 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 everyone. I am your host, Jess, the founder of Black Travelers Network. I hope uh, things have been going well for you as we are in this season and this moment in time. Before we get into today's discussion, I'm going to adjust very quickly uh, the audio, um, the background audio, and I want to make it a point to kind of lay the foundation for uh, today's discussion. So before we get into it, I want to take some time to do a bit of house housekeeping. I don't want to date the broadcast, so if any of these trips, any of these destinations that I show and share on your screen, if any of those destinations appeal to you, definitely reach out. At the current moment, we are prioritizing travel to Brazil, Spain, South Africa, Kenya, and Vietnam. You know, we we have such deep relationships that have existed uh, for many years in different parts of the world, but especially on the African continent. So definitely email us at blacktravelersnetwork at gmail.com. That's blacktravelersnetwork at gmail.com. If any one of these destinations jumps out at you and you'd like to get more details on how you can be a part of the next experience. I want to first start off by shouting out one of our community members, Tiffany Wright. Shout out to you, uh, Tiffany. Uh, The sister, she... She was so great because, you know, we actually get a lot of people who at different times, people will make it a point to write into Black Travelers Network. Uh, They'll email us. And um, I'm going to start sharing more of those emails because some of sometimes the emails are just questions. Sometimes the emails are reactions and responses to what Uh, We've emailed out to our community. You know, we get a number of different emails on top of the the trip inquiries. But this sister, she had a really great question. So I wanted to make sure that we shared her email on today's broadcast. And um, we definitely let her know that we were going to share it. Uh, And so I'm going to give my two cents uh, on her questions. And for those of you who who are listening, I welcome you to drop your thoughts and ideas uh, for the sister down in the comments section. You know, I although I travel a lot, I don't proclaim to know everything. And not only do I not proclaim to know everything, I've not been to every country in the world. And I don't desire to go to every country in the world, believe it or not. Um, but I say that to say I'm going to read uh, her email and I welcome all of you to chime in in the comment section. So Tiffany writes in saying the following. She says, I am looking to get info on possibly leaving the United States and I have a six-year-old son. Looking for a place I can make an easy transition from the United States to a place in Africa that has a great education system, housing infrastructure that's reasonable, and laws that will allow freedom and safety. A place where, like myself, with customer service, I can apply for work within the country, where I am welcomed. If you have any suggestions on how to make this transition easier, please let me know. Um, uh, she says that she's working on getting her passport, but um, if we have better options, if we have options or a better way to, uh, to get a passport, um, she says she's definitely interested and that she plans to uh, get a passport and travel uh, in May. Uh, to visit the African continent. She um, closes it out by saying, I have uh, been looking at other options such as Panama City, Costa Rica, Spain, and Bali. 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes her email. And so <clears throat> here's what I suggest. And like I said, I welcome those of you who are watching and the live broadcast. Definitely feel free to um, leave your comments in the section uh, based off of what her questions is. But this part is for Tiffany and for, for anyone uh, who's like Tiffany, who is interested and open to uh, relocating, uh, whether it's to the African continent or, or really any part of the world. So Tiffany, uh, and uh, who, if you're listening, here's what I suggest. My first suggestion is don't decide to relocate to a country without visiting it. At least, I always say at least a couple of times, and I would actually argue for you to visit a country that you like to relocate to more than a couple of times. You need to get the flavor of the country. You need to understand the country's history, the people, the culture of the country. This is a big reason why we host the trips that we host in the way that we host them. There's a specific kind of way we lay out our travel experiences uh, when our community visits these countries. And there's a, a, a reason for that because sometimes people have such a great time. Well, for us, people love uh, our experiences, but some countries speak to certain people more than other countries, okay? And you will know really, Tiffany, when you found the country that you should be really thinking more in depth about relocating to because it's going to be easy for you to visit multiple times before you commit to a longer term stay or a longer term relocation. Most countries that resonate with people who eventually move to those countries, many of those people have been to the country multiple times. It may have been something about the experience that just captured them and the minute they left was the minute they were planning on on going back I've talked to a number of people who are expats in other countries and uh, just a number of people who are Americans who live right now in America but who spent a portion of their life living abroad and Usually before taking the leap, these people visit multiple times. So that's my first suggestion. Uh, Tiffany also mentioned Panama uh, as an option. And here, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of positives about Panama. But just so you know that there's a major altitude discrepancy in Panama, uh, depending on which part you, you visit. And... A number, I'm sorry, I take that back, not Panama. I'm thinking of Peru. Um, Panama, I, I, I'll say, is, you know, a lot of positive vibes, a lot of good energy in Panama. And actually, you know, the United States has a fair amount of uh, Panamanians who are, who have relocated to America and who are uh, here uh, in the United States and have been here for a, a while. I know, you know, I'm not sure what part of the country uh, you're located in, Tiffany. Um, but I will, I will just tell you that, you know, there tends to be a, a heavy population of Panamanians that are in the Los Angeles uh, area. And so be thoughtful of that. Um, but also know uh, for Panama, a lot of people have uh, who visit who visited have had uh, great experiences there um, but I've yet to really hear anyone say solidly solidly that they'd like to relocate to Panama most people who are from Panama are trying to get to the United States so I think that's also uh, important to be thoughtful of Costa Rica you also mentioned Costa Rica and again, ladies and gentlemen, drop any advice in, in the comments or in the chat. But Costa Rica is 
it's it's nice and you know it's a lot of good vibes there are quite a number of United States expats who are calling Puerto Rico home I actually have a family member who goes to Puerto Rico I'm sorry not Puerto Rico Costa Rica like every uh every couple of weeks uh his company uh sends him there uh and he's even gone there outside of his country he loves it there and he's actually talked about relocating i have another friend who's looking to relocate to costa rica so costa rica right now is really popular uh and it's not that far from home and it, and it sounds like because you don't have a passport that you know this may very well likely be your first international trip so I recommend starting out with a place close to home, not too far out uh, that you can get the vibe and the energy and and connect with other uh, um, uh, uh, Americans who are in the area. You also mentioned Spain. And of course, uh, if you look at the list, we are visiting Spain. Uh, that trip is coming up. So you're definitely invited and uh, I'm happy to make sure that we get you the, the details for that experience as we'll be talking more about Spain next month. You know, I really enjoyed the country of Spain. Uh, just remember there are different parts of Spain that gives different vibes. You have Madrid, Barcelona, and a number of different parts in the southern portion of Spain, uh, Andalusia. Uh, there are a number of different areas there like Cordoba and Seville, you know, quite a different vibe, quite a different energy. Uh, the southern part of, of, of Spain is not that far from uh, the uh, from Morocco, uh, the African continent itself. So Spain is actually really good to visit because it's also situated uh, to a number of different uh, European uh, uh, countries. So it makes it very easy to navigate out, outside of Spain and get a feel for other uh, countries in Europe as well. So it's very easy to explore when you're in Spain. But in terms of the culture and the vibe and the people and can you see yourself living there, uh, for an extended period of time, that's something that you will only get if you visit. You know, when I visited, I didn't really get that feeling. It was definitely nice and it definitely made me want to explore other parts of the country. But, you know, to each his own. The last destination that you mentioned uh, that is also quite popular is Bali. <laughs> Bali is always uh, a popular destination however I must warn you that because so many people from the United States have relocated to Bali the cheap prices that kind of lured that first wave of Americans over to Bali Bali and you may expect Bali to be uh, quite cheap a lot of people who have been relocating over there actually say it's not so cheap anymore. And I know you mentioned, you know, finances and affordability. So as of the current moment, inflation in Bali has uh, been reported to be quite high. And a number of people reported a quick rise in the inflation in Bali over the course of a single year. So you'll definitely want to look into uh, Bali a little bit deeper before you commit to again I can't emphasize enough visit the place first do not decide to relocate or move without having visited uh, a place so that allows you to do more research uh, for that particular uh, destination um, and really any destination when it comes to affordability uh, relocating for a longer term stay um, but I just say Bali definitely is a place that you should uh, likely visit it, visit. So that's sort of like a broad swath of the countries you mentioned. The other thing uh, that uh, our traveler mentioned is having a six year old and uh, wanting to, uh, you know, 
find a, a school, you know, I guess, uh, education system, something, a place that has a strong education system. And she talked about it in the context of Africa, but I'll just say very generally, if you have a child or children and you're relocating long-term, you will first want to look at international schools in that particular country. A lot of times those international schools are situated in different in particular areas in a country. And so that can also uh, help you to figure out where the best place is for you to live uh, in terms of being able to, to get your child or children to school. Many countries have international schools where uh, a lot of people who are residing in that in, in the country who will send their kids to those schools. And the international schools tend to have a more diverse group of children from different parts of the world. Their parents tend to have a particular level of financial resources to afford to be able to pay for a more quality education in the country. So that's important. And the curriculum for the young people tend to be much more in line with what your child is likely to uh, experience if they were in Western schools. So I would take a closer look at the international schools, uh, regardless of the country. Um, housing. I have to talk briefly about housing. You know, you can find a nice quality housing all over the world, including the African continent, that is affordably priced and high, as well as housing that is expensive. However, depending on the country, you want to look at housing that is not just affordable, but housing that is quality. Affordable housing in another country may or may not meet your American standards. So just remember, Tiffany, some of the things we take for granted here in America is not guaranteed in another country. And just as a quick example, you know, for most Americans, it's unthinkable in America to get an apartment or a house that does not have an air conditioning unit or a central AC, is, which is the most common here. But that's not so common in, for example, a, a well-developed country like South Africa. And, you know, it's so not the most common thing that even some of the hotels, like if it's not a brand name hotel, like a Hilton or a Marriott or another major hotel chain, if you're in the country, the well-developed country of South Africa, you have to inquire whether or not the hotel or the lodging has air conditioning. It is not a automatic guarantee. And I say that because you cannot take any of the comforts that you receive here in America for granted, okay? And just automatically assume uh, that that's something you uh, will find in other places, okay? The last bit uh, before I get into, into the Africa piece is about the laws. You know, uh, Tiffany wanted to know about laws uh, that promoted freedom and safety. And when we start talking about laws, this is tricky because every country has a different set of laws. Even here in America, there are laws on the books in some states that we may not necessarily even know about. So going abroad, it's not totally possible to know the full scope of any country's laws, but generally speaking, you have to be vigilant uh, no matter where you go. Uh, never take safety uh, and freedom for granted. It's really hard uh, to do that when you're talking about going abroad. So now, <laughs> that brings me to the African continent. And this is the conversation that I didn't want to have, ladies and gentlemen. But you know what? It's time. It is time. And I'm not going to go too deeply on Ghana. I'm going to do a special piece for Ghana because I just... The, the part about Ghana gets so deep and so touchy. And I know Ghanaians hate hearing me talk about their country, but I've definitely been there a number of times and I'm not uh, being malicious if I, if I 
tell what I've experienced in Ghana. It's just been my experience. And based off of my experience, I am allowed to have an assessment. <laughs> okay. Um, but, you know, I want to be clear that as an American, and, and Tiffany kind of spoke to, to this in, in her email to us, as an American wanting to relocate specifically to Africa, you can forget about going there and finding a job. I think, you know, we have to just put that out there because it amazes me how many people still do not know that. Um, that's not really how the continent of Africa works. Most of the countries um, that you go to on the African continent is going to be very difficult for you to find a job like you could go job hunting or job searching here in America. Most black Americans who are in Africa who have relocated are either there because they have a business that they are running and those who have jobs, likely it's a job with an American company that allows them to live there and, and, and work or maybe one of the more well-developed European countries. You know, you cannot relocate to the African continent expecting to get a job. I think that's the first thing that our, our you know, Americans need to understand about traveling abroad, and in particular traveling to different countries in the, on the African continent. You have to think about it from this perspective. So many of the citizens of these countries need jobs themselves. And those jobs that do exist in their job market will typically go to their citizens. It's not like in America where people can come over here from anywhere in the world, get job training and get a job. That is not how the continent of Africa works. Unless you are dealing with a well-developed country like Canada, some of the European countries, Australia, or other well-developed countries, you are likely not going to find employment uh, in these places. And again, if you want to relocate, relocate to the African continent, you have to already have your money figured out. Be of a builder's mindset or have employment established that allows you to be there. So which of the African countries do I recommend uh, our uh, good sister Tiffany relocates to? I wish I had a drum roll, uh, but I don't. I only have a beat. <laughs> so I play the beat. Which of the countries? Wow. That's a tough one, but a very easy one for me to say at this moment. Which of the African countries do I recommend you relocate to? None of them. None of them. Not one of them. That would be my advice. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Jess. I am the founder of Black Travelers Network, and this is how I see us moving forward. And as you can see, we have some great destinations on our list of places to visit. And I just invite any of you and all of you to join us next time. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, like the broadcast if you enjoyed the conversation. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen.